Hey guys, I'm David Dodge. Welcome back to Real Estate School. I have put this together to help you guys to start doing deals, to join the community, to network, connect, collaborate, joint venture, and learn. How so easy? We close fast, and any time that works for you, your house don't need it. We'll throw cash it hits so fast, don't know what to do. Hey guys, I'm David Dodge. Welcome back to Real Estate School. I have put this together to help you guys. To, to start doing deals, to join the community, to network, connect, collaborate, joint venture, and learn from my experience and a bunch of my experience. Ryan here today, one of my friends, like helping us all out to learn how we can start doing this business. We have free courses in this community for wholesaling and landlording and tons of resources, plus live trainings just like this one with replays. You might be watching this on a replay, most likely, right? So, we're here to help. Thank you for being a part of the community. Ryan is from Prime Corporate Services. These guys help me out all the time, setting up entities and doing all types of amazing things and really just uh -huh. taking the complicated out of it, right? What do we need? We need something simple, something we can do. And Prime can help solve that for you. So Ryan, thank you so much for being here today and being part of this community and uh, teaching us all about all the amazing things you guys are doing. No, thank you. Thank you. I, I was just, uh, before we were launching, I was just telling everybody about um, how much we love and appreciate you, David, and all that you do for uh, not just us here at Prime, but what you do for your community, how hard you work, the, the heart and soul and passion that you pour into your community and helping people win. It's not only uh, uh, admirable, but it's inspiring as well. And I just want to say thank you to you for all that you do as well. Um, so like David was saying here at Prime Corporate Services, we we specialize in three areas, asset protection, privacy, and tax minimization. Those are the three areas that we specialize in. And so we're going to jump in and, and today, just to give you like a little bit of a, a snapshot on what who we are and what we've done. Today, we've done a little over, um, we've done a little over 100,000 entity structures. Um, and uh, this year for the 2022 tax season, we're going to do uh, just a little over 20,000 small businesses taxes. So that gives you just a little bit of a perspective of, of who we are and, and what we're doing. Um, now, I just want to make sure I'm, I'm having a technical. Can you guys see my screen? Is it big? Yeah, yeah, yeah it looks good. Yeah. It's okay. big. Perfect. All perfect. Right. perfect. Um, hooked on phonics never really worked for me. Um, and David uh, is so kind that he never reminds me of that. So I appreciate that. Um, but we really, here at Prime, we really want to focus on and help and, and, and partner with you to help you do all of those things. We want asset protection. We want privacy. We want tax minimization. We believe that everyone should pay their fair share of taxes, but we also believe that no one should pay a penny more than that. And so as we go through this, uh, we're going to talk about the different types of entities uh, we were talking earlier, uh, Tammy, you were talking about a DBA. Um, I believe it was Michael um, has a LLC for his business. Eric has two. Nick, I'm not sure if you got any uh, S-Corps or LLCs or C-Corps or anything like that for businesses purposes. Um, but really today, David has set this up for each and every one of you. So feel free, interrupt me, come off mute, ask questions. We'll make sure that we get those all covered. But we're going to talk about the different types of entities, we're going to talk about what a deduction is and how they work. We're going to talk about asset protection and generating wealth and personal credit versus business credit. Um, Ryan, thank you for making us part of the presentation, man, because that's really what it's all about. Yes, sir. Is, is just getting people's questions answered, right? I love it. Thank you for being here, man. This is amazing. Yeah. <clears throat> no, no, love it. Um, so uh, just a little quick legal disclaimer. I'm not an attorney. I'm not a CPA. Um, my mom says I have a face for radio, so they won't even let me play one on TV. Um, but here at Prime Corporate Services, we've uh, um, all of the services that we offer are all in-house. So we've got a whole suite of attorneys. Um, we've got CPAs, uh, tax preparers, tax strategists. Um, we've got corporate credit um, uh, coaches. We've got um, business strategists all here in one uh, community, like underneath this one brand, this one company, we're about 300 employees. And so everything that I'm going to talk to you, you guys about got today is all in house. There? Yeah, we've got 300 people helping other people. That's so yeah. cool. 
Yeah, it's crazy. It's absolutely crazy. Um, and we absolutely love what we do. I don't know if you guys can see my t-shirt that I'm wearing. Uh, uh, again, uh, we, we definitely believe that, um, you know, the IRS doesn't deserve everything that they get. So, um, but, you know, here's some, you know, we, as we talk about business structures, you know, uh, Tammy, you were talking about a, a um, you know, a, a DBA, you know, these are in, informal business structures, the sole proprietorship, partnerships, uh, as opposed to business structures, which is a LLC, uh, which stands for Limited Liability Corporation and Corporations. And the beautiful thing about um, these different things is you look at the informal business structure. Yes, you have a brand. Yes, you're operating that. Yes, there's some tax advantages to that. And it's definitely better than just operating underneath your personal name. But what um, the laws have done, especially over the last uh, 20, 30 years around formal business structures, as they've made it so that it's easier for you to take advantage of what's out there. Um, you know, going back to the book, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, you know, business structures were created um, because, you know, we started out as a nation of no tax, right? Like we we wanted to get away from tax. And then, you know, the whole Boston Tea Party and that was all based around a tea tax and and different things. And and so what happened was, is that that tax was formed and created and it was built to to fund and, and do different things. But what happened was, is the wealthy didn't want to give up their money, right? So they came up with these formal business structures and LLCs and corporations and different things to do that. And to illustrate that, in 2021, Warren Buffett paid 0.01% in personal income tax, okay? 0.01. I'm guessing, unless uh, you already know all of this stuff, that you probably fell in the same bucket as LeBron James did, because, right, it's the NBA Finals, LeBron James in 21 paid 34% in personal income tax. And most of us fall in that bucket of 30 to 40% in personal income tax. Well, what's the difference between LeBron James and Warren Buffett other than one uh, thinks that he's going to play basketball for the rest of his life, making $100 million a year versus one understands entity structure and tax strategies. And so that's David and I's hope and prayer today is that what you guys get out of this is that you take a little bit of knowledge away to help you keep more of what you make. I have no doubt that David- Hey, you know what? I love sir. this. This is actually one of my favorite topics is, is tax. Because if you ask the average person on the street how much taxes they pay, they're going to say 30%, 34%. But the reality is, guys, is, is that we pay more in tax than we do in anything else. And, and it's of my opinion- all right. Cool. Notice how I how I worded that. It's of my opinion that we pay more than fifty one percent at the end of the day, and here's why: we're taxed when we earn, and that's what Ryan was just talking about. Like, is it Warren Buffett style or thirty four percent LeBron James style, right? But then we got to pay taxes on the real estate and the boats and the planes and the trailers and the RVs that we own every year. We have to pay real estate tax and we have to pay personal property tax. So even buying stuff with the money that you already were taxed on cost you tax to own to own it. And then you go to the grocery store and you buy apples and pears and whatever it is that you eat. Hopefully it's some good stuff, steaks and eggs and fun stuff, right? You're paying eight, nine, 10% tax, sales tax to spend your money. So you're getting taxed 34% to, to make it. You're getting taxed eight, nine, 10% to sell it. And then you buy cool stuff, you're getting taxed to own that shit. Pardon my language, but like, come on. So yeah. it's 51%. Everybody misinterprets the total cost of tax. Now, do we need tax? We got to have schools and we got to have roads and we got to have this stuff, right? Yep. But here's the thing. There's lots of money that's paid in. And even if you can save a little bit, there's still some going in. And why do we have these structures? And, and why is there the difference between Warren Buffett and LeBron James? Here's why. Here's why. Rich people write the laws. And they write them to protect rich people. Like, 
I'm not trying to be negative here with this next thing, but like when's the last time you saw somebody that worked at Taco Bell or McDonald's or a fast food restaurant become a U.S. senator or Congress person? Yep. Right. It doesn't typically happen. And the reason is, is because those are rich people that get those positions. And, and those are the law creators. Those are the policy makers. Yep. So when they're making policy, they're going to say, hey, anybody that's making money, that's getting that, that, that's getting hourly wages, we're going to auto tax them. They're not even going to give them a choice. W2 outside of a job, you get taxed the highest. But if you're a business owner or an investor, and the best way to make money is using your money. And if you use your money and you calculate time into the equation, you can get by with 10 to 15% tax where the average person's paying 40% tax. So Ryan, sorry to sidetrack it. No, I'm really passionate about this, about this stuff because a lot of people do it wrong. Yep. And the best way to create wealth isn't, in my opinion, me owning, you know, 70 properties or flipping a bunch of shit, pardon my language. <laughs> Listen, this is, I'm just trying to be real. This is real estate yeah. school. We're having fun, right? Yeah. The best way to create wealth is to keep the majority of it, not give it away. So having the right structures and the right systems is so incredibly important. Again, thank you for being here. Yeah, no, thank you. Thanks for the opportunity. Um, and he's absolutely right. Everything that David is talking about is... You know, there's over 76,000 pages of tax code. tax code. And there's what, three pages that say that you got to pay it on this date and who you mail your check to right. and how they collect it. But the rest of it, the rest of it is loopholes. Yep. And uh, Tammy, for your benefit, um, as a DBA, some of these things are available to you for tax deductions and write-offs. But the other aspect is, is there's like right here, there's more than over 250 deductions that are available to you once you create an entity. And the average entrepreneur leaves about $9,000 a year on the table um, by overpaying in taxes, $9,000 a year. Now, there's a, always there's this misconception out there that I ha only create an entity once I'm generating income from my business. But the beautiful thing about an LLC is they're called what's called a pass through entity. And those pass through entities allow you to offset. So like business expenses that you have, you know, there's like, we're talking about the the over 250 deductions, right? Advertising, bank services, um, equipment rental, fees, furnitures, my cell phone, my home office, licenses, marketing, uh, parking, payroll, postage, you know, rent, like whatever that is, travel, utilities, like there's so many different things that are now available that today are just expenses. But once we give the IRS the uh, notification that we have the intent to operate as a business, then we can start using those as deductions. And because an LLC is a pass-through entity, those deductions can also help you offset your income as a W-2 employee. And so again, that's why like- Oh, I that's cool. So you can do this while you have a job still and then yeah, offset the other 100%. income. That's cool that it will cross over. Yeah, a hundred percent. And that's and that, amazing. Uh, yeah. Right. And and that's again going back and a lot of like going back to that 76,000 pages of tax code, it's not written for the W-2 employee. It's written for large corporations and 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 businesses that are out there, small business, small business owners that are out there. Here's a perfect example of a tax deduction. They just raised this from a little over 12,000. How many of you guys, Tammy? Uh, Nick, Michael, Eric, uh, you know, how many of you guys have kids, right? So Tammy's raising her hand. There we go. I got it uh, um, out there. Three. So mm -hmm. Nick, Nick's got three. Michael's got well, kids. There we go. He's Michael, an adult now though. So. Two. I, I just gave you another one that you didn't know about Nick. So now you got three um, and <laughs> Michael's got three, but here's the perfect thing. So once you create an entity, you can pay your kids from your business um, that is, uh, so they can claim $13,850 per child that is, 
that they don't have to pay taxes on, okay? So I've got right here sitting in my office, I've got my 15 year old daughter that as soon as I'm done with this call, we're headed to the airport and we're going to Dallas, Texas for a basketball tournament, okay? Nice. Well, my daughter, and I live in Utah, my daughter, uh, she works for me in my business. So I pay her $13,850. So instead of me taking her to Dallas today, she's actually taking her dad to Dallas because that money's coming out of there. I had to buy her basketball shoes. I have to buy her camps. I have to buy all of these things that were normally expenses as a parent. But now because I have a business owner and she works for me, I can pay her $13,850 that is tax-free to her. But that now becomes a $13,000, $850 expense to my business, which is 100% tax deductible that is passed through to any other income that I have. And so now every time I go buy her shoes or we go on a, a, a to a, a camp or we're going to a, a tournament or that, she gets to treat dad for the hotel, for the rental car, for all of these different things because she works for me that normally would have been an expense, right? So those are all things. Now, again, obviously they have to be reasonable support, uh, supporting documentation. So she you know, uh, uh, does emails for me. She'll do like marketing. She'll, I, I use her in my social media for advertising and marketing purposes and different things. And obviously I can't, you know, you gotta be aware of child labor laws. I can't have her in the basement, um, 24 hours a day, putting stamps on envelopes and not feeding her or giving her water or proper. Soap. I know people that, uh, hire their kids, um, and take, to take family photos and use the photos on the website and they pay their kids as uh, models. A hundred percent. So they don't even have to do anything at all other than just smile for a photo. Right. So like, there's lots of creative ways to do that, but the, the whole, the whole idea is, is that entities allow you to spend money and offset the total gross income and it taxed on what's left. And if you don't have that, you're not playing by the game. The rich people that wrote the laws play by. So the whole idea here is to have the structure set up and then that gives you the ability to go to a bank and get a business bank account. And then from there, obviously have liability through the structure that Ryan and, and Prime can help you guys set up. Yep. But, but then essentially start operating outside of your social security number. Like what is a business LLC, guys? It's nothing more than an EIN number at Correct. the end of the day. That's it. That's all it is. Yep. And then you have you have you have a an LLC that's registered with your secretary of state of your local state, right? Which lays out how it's going to be down. And then you have an operating agreement, which is personal. Yep. Nobody has to see that unless you're trying to transact with them, right? Yeah. So like the idea is very simple, but you want to set it up right. And Prime can help you guys do that for sure. But once it's set up right and you have an EIN number and you have an LLC set up and you have a business bank account, now everything you spend comes off the top line. Yep. And if you don't have this entity structure set up, it doesn't work that way. You don't get offsets. So if you want to offset and pay tax on the net profit versus the gross profit, you have to operate here. I mean, this is like, this is literally step one in becoming an entrepreneur, not even a real estate investor. Any business has to have a license like this, or has to be set up in, in a proper entity structure like this. So, yeah. right. Thank 100%. You. Well, and, and just going back to your conversation around the wealthy are the ones that have created these rules so that they don't have, they can keep more of what they make. Absolutely. Uh, uh, how many of you guys just watched the masters in Augusta, Georgia, right? I'm mm -hmm. not a golf guy. I don't golf. Uh, uh, so don't hold that against me, Nick. Um, but uh, you seen that one house, right? That's in the parking lot of the, of the masters of the Augusta. Well, there's no hotels in Augusta, Georgia. There are, but there's not a lot of spaces to stay there. And so what was happening was, is that all everybody that lives there around the golf course, every year when the masters would come, they, they would leave. leave town. And rent and their house out. would rent their homes, right? Like 20000 a night. Right? Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> and it's like, I know there's going to be somebody going through my closet, but you know what? For 20K <laughs> times, times times seven <laughs> nights, I'm like, guys, you know, yeah, take, take, them. take them. Take yeah. the slacks. <laughs> Seriously, take them. Exactly. You know? I'm, so, I got $100,000 in eight days. Come on, get out of here. Exactly. And so right. what would happen is, is now all of that income 
the IRS is like, hey, we want that. And the rich is like, no way. No so way. Yeah. They created what's called the Augusta rule. Literally, it's the Augusta rule, which means that you can rent your residence, not a room, not whatever. You can rent your entire residence for 14 days and 100% of that income is tax-free. So what uh, a lot of people do is you, you know, Tammy, you're talking about your home on the lake, right? Um, there's different things that you could do for your real estate business there. You could actually rent your home out where you're like, I don't want strangers going through my underwear drawer. I don't want to rent that out. It's not worth 14 days of tax-free income. It is to me. It is. Yeah, it is. <laughs> <laughs> and I ain't hiding nothing, so I'm not, I'm hey, not I too worried this. about That's it. Because David don't wear. it. <laughs> That's because David doesn't wear underwear, right, David? Right. <laughs> <laughs> so, so what you do is with that 14 days is you can rent it to your business. That does two things. So let's just say, for example, and you have to find like what a home in uh, Wisconsin on the on the lake or. Uh, Nick, I'm not sure where you're at or Eric or Michael, but where your homes are at, you have to find a comparable. So it's not the $20,000 a night, or maybe it is of the masters. But then what you can do is your business, once you've created that entity, can rent from you personally, your home from you for 14 days. Okay. Now it needs to be in line with like the rental market supports. And then you have to look at other different things around that to support it from a documentation standpoint. But let's just say it's $1,000 a night to rent my home. So my business will rent my home for $1,000 a night for 14 nights. So my business pays me personally $14,000 that's tax-free that I no longer, I don't have to claim anything on that from a tax perspective. So I pay zero tax. So not only are you getting zero not only are you paying no tax on that money but then you're offsetting the income by by spending it too right because exactly, you're out of because the business your business just generated business spending, fourteen thousand dollar uh, yeah. uh, uh debt that now is a hundred percent tax deductible to your business so in yep. reality is because it's a pass-through entity you just generated twenty eight thousand dollars in um tax benefits for your business because now you have that see how that works i love that that's awesome thousand and just tax free what david's talking about is that is a fourteen thousand dollar expense to my business so now i get twenty eight thousand dollars in tax benefits from that now you look at your personal situation today and you look at your top line because they're all passed through is uh what would that twenty eight thousand dollars have done to offset what you paid in taxes last year by simply having a business and implementing some tax strategies around that. So, um, and then, you know, limited liability, we talked about this, it stands for limited liability company uh, formed um, legally separate yourself from your business, making sure. And so this gets back to the asset protection and privacy. In the name of game of wealth, you wanna control everything but own nothing. So your personal finances are secure and you're personally not liable for personal debt. So again, so what you're doing when you're creating an entity is you're separating you personally from being liable um, from debtors or attorneys or lawsuits. And unfortunately in the United States, every uh, I think it's every day or every hour, um, there's over 7,000 lawsuits filed every every hour, every day. Either way, it's a big number, and that's way yeah, too many. Yeah, people are so happy It's sometimes. the new get-rich-quick scheme. It, it is. really is. It, it, it is. is. It's unfortunate. It's really unfortunate. It's, but, so it's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when. And yeah, so having an LLC is great, though, because you can limit your liability. Like, I you know, I don't typically have more than about 15 or 20 properties in an LLC. So I have four or five different holding LLCs. And then I have different LLCs for my flipping business, for my wholesaling business, for my, my lending business, you know, different apartment buildings will have their own LLCs because, you know, it's like one little piece can't take down the whole ship, you know, yep. but uh, if somebody wants to get Sue happy, they can, you know, essentially give it a shot what's in that entity. So, yeah, you know, some people go crazy and they do one per each and that just seems a little excessive to me. You know. See, I should have I should have just flipped to the other uh, page there, David. Right. So 40 million lawsuits filed every year in the United States, 76 new lawsuits every minute. 
Yeah, Second. there you go. Well, every minute. That's just um, crazy. and then the lawsuits that are filed: breach of contract, slip and fall, premises liability, auto accidents, employee discrimination, customer discrimination, faulty product or service, harassment, intellectual property rights, misleading claims. Like all of those are there, and like some of these are things that hold a lot of people back from wanting to go out and be a successful entrepreneur like David and having real estate and building properties and, and getting doors and building a portfolio. Um, but the reality is, is that you should not ever be afraid of this because if we set you Scared up- Scared money don't make money, baby. Come on. Yes. You got to get out there and do something. Amen. You right. ain't going to go nowhere sitting on your couch. Yep. No exactly. way. hundred <laughs> percent. So the other thing that we wanted to talk to you guys about is um, the concept of personal credit versus business credit. And one thing that uh, working with David is you're going to learn is that you never, you don't want to be a personal piggy bank to your business. You want to use other people's money. And the easiest way to do that is by establishing business credit. Now, the difference between personal credit, which is your FICO, right, off of your social security number. And that's typically a score of 300 to 850 is that range, right? Mm -hmm. That's your personal credit. Business credit is your EI. We're using your EIN, just like David said at the beginning. It's not your social, it's your EIN, creating a business. And then we build what's called a paid X score, P-A-Y-D-E-X. That score is generally from a one to a 100. Now, when you're establishing true business credit, now it's not simply having a credit card that has your name and your company name on it. I fell victim to that a few years ago um, where we had a business and we were running everything through uh, uh, what I thought was a business credit, but it was my personal guarantee behind it. We ended up selling the business and part of the transaction of selling the business was not covering the last month's worth of credit card expenses on that credit card. And so I got stuck with $150,000 in uh, uh, the credit card debt that I had to pay off because it was underneath my personal name. So when we're bailing out what's called a paid X score, we're literally using only your EIN. We're not using your personal security number at all. And so what we do with a business that there you it go. does it's three the difference things. between using yes. an SSN versus an EIN. It's such correct. It's a tax haven. A hundred percent. And I mean, it does three things. One is it separates liability from you from any business debt that you're creating. It creates that separation so you don't have any liability. Two, because we're actually establishing credit on a business entity, the terms are a lot more favorable. So for example, the APR on a personal credit card is anywhere from 18 to 24%. On a, on a uh, business credit card, it's anywhere at 0% <laughs> or uh, zero, uh, to up to 36 months. And then after that, it's two to 12%. So just looking at it from that perspective, there's a huge savings there. And then because you're getting more favorable terms, a lot of times you have a lot more access. So I was working with a client the other day that went into Home Depot and was only able to qualify for a $500 a Home Depot credit card. He had some issues with his credit in the past. We helped him establish an entity. We helped him build business credit. Now, this is not a claim and everybody's situation is different. But once we helped him establish that paid X score, we were able to help him get $25,000 at that same Home Depot with that same uh, uh, Home Depot card. The only difference was is that now he's not personally liable for it. It's his business. And because we were establishing on his business, he was able to get more access to that, the funds around that. And now he had money to go out and work on his fix and flips. Like David just came from his 40 apartment uh, building uh, apartment building that he's doing and he's renovating. He's in two of them today, right? That takes capital. Does he want to use his own personal credit or does he want to use somebody else's money with a lot more favorable terms and more access to it? Obviously, he's a smart businessman. Thus, that's why he's smiling right now. I do right all now. my deals with OPM. I yep. use everybody else's money on all my deals. Private lenders, hard money lenders, long-term financing yep. with credit unions and banks. But uh, it's much easier to, it's, it's actually, you know what I found, Ryan, is it's much easier 
to <laughs> refinance a bird deal with somebody else's payoff request than your own payoff request to the bank. Because if it's your own payoff request to the bank, they're going to say, well, this is a cash out refinance. You're getting money out. But whenever yeah. that payoff goes to a different entity, they say, okay, it's just like a bank pay- buying off another bank's note. So yeah. OPM makes the process simpler, less paperwork, yeah. it's easier. And it's less risk for you in, at the end. But also to me, when I'm using other people's money, I'm more motivated. You know, 100%. like I get kind of lazy, done several hundred deals at this point. And like, sometimes I'm just not in a hurry to do anything, right? But when I borrow the money and I'm paying an interest rate every day, I wake up and I'm like, all right, I got to do something here. You know, what's the next step on this project? And it keeps it moving quick because you're motivated to keep the rate down, the interest rate down, but it's still irrelevant. You know, you pay five to 10,000 in interest to do a deal and make 40 grand. Come on. You didn't use a dollar of your own money to make 35,000. It's all said and done. That's re- no brainer. You know, oh, 100%. So, this is awesome. 100%. Thank you, man. All day. No, all day, all day. Yeah. I couldn't agree with you more. Um, so this here, I don't want this to be overwhelming to you. And I know, Michael, you said that you had, a, or Eric, you said you had a couple of entities. Michael, you have an entity. Nick, did you let me know, do you have an entity currently? I have an LLC. You have an LLC. Perfect. I got um, eight of them. Yeah. <laughs> David's got eight. <laughs> I love it. And so I don't want this to be overwhelming. And we always say the right product for the right person at the right time. And we really, and this is, again, the, one of the reasons why I want to commend all of you for partnering with David and furthering and, and, and growing and putting together plans and dreams and goals to help further um, your real estate and business is that we want this to grow with you. And so this is an example of what um, we typically suggest for somebody. So the first is that trust will, living will, power attorney, that full comprehensive estate plan. Again, I said that the name of the game is that you want to control everything but own nothing. So you never have to worry about litigation. You never have to worry about somebody trying to come in and steal your assets or come after you. You want to be able to have that privacy and protection from debtors or different people around that. And then obviously the tax minimization strategies. And so um, typically this is what we would suggest long-term as you grow and you start doing things is that you would have a full comprehensive estate plan. And then what we would do is we create a holding company that is in your trust. Now, the reason why we suggest creating a holding company in a safe haven state there's three safe haven states. Really, there's four, but Alaska, it's got some anomalies to it. So we won't talk about Alaska, but you've heard of uh, Johnson & Johnson, a Delaware company. Well, why are they in Delaware, right? Or you'll see like incorporated in Nevada or incorporated in Wyoming. Why are people doing this? Again, these are strategies that the wealthy do and these states have capitalized on it and they've created what's called the safe haven state which has maximum tax benefits, maximum privacy, um, and, and maximum protection. The benefit behind that, and we usually use Wyoming just because it's cheaper to maintain and have Wyoming. But when you create an entity in Wyoming, Nevada, or Delaware, it creates a corporate bell that cannot be pierced. So what happens is, is that if anyone were to ever sue any of your entities, um, they don't know who actually owns it. And you, that corporate veil cannot be pierced as they're going through that. And so what we suggest is creating a holding company in one of those safe haven states. And then we create subsidiaries underneath that holding company um, in the states of which you're doing business and the types that you're doing business in. And then it's also important when you're creating entities that you look at, is this passive income or active income? And again, you look at this from a perspective of like active income would be in the real estate game. And that passive is zero to 20. So get that, get it to passive. But in the beginning, you need to have the active income. Of course, you can't make money without money, right? Correct. The best way the rich people make money and they pay zero tax is they make money with their money and they don't take the profit. They, they, they say, you know what? I'm going to hold off. And then that new money plus the old money then makes more profit and they don't take it. They keep it. They let it park. They park it. They leave it. And you can make millions of dollars a year and not pay a dollar in tax and it can all keep growing. Right. 
Yeah. But again, it's hard to make that active money whenever you or that passive money when you don't have the active. So I love that you guys have the consulting LLC and the trading LLC and the and the other LLC. And here's the thing, guys, it doesn't have to be complicated. You can start with one and then you can build on this. This is the structure that Ryan's showing here today that that is the ideal solution. But you don't need all of it necessarily right away. If you want to set it up today, great, go for it. Power to you, right? But at the same time, you can start with, with the structure and then you can add to that as you need. I love that. Ryan, this is awesome, yeah. man. So you guys are setting up the LLCs and helping with the tax side of it. Do you guys do bookkeeping? We do uh, bookkeeping. Tax do, filing? Um, tax filing, tax strategy. strategy. Like for us, we don't, we don't look at tax season as being January through April. We really look at tax season as being like end of August through the end of the year. Because I want to say, hey, David, you're having an incredible year this year. This is what your tax liability is in August. Right. Yeah. You, know, you can either write Uncle Sam a big fat check next year, or let's look at some tax strategies that you can go and invest back in your business. So we want to look at that with Nick and Tammy and Michael and Eric. We want to look at that from a perspective of like, what does your year look like? Or maybe your year wasn't exactly what you had hoped it to be. Okay, let's go grab some of those deductions and some of those other areas that we can do to be able to help that and be able to offset that from that perspective. So we do entity formation and creation. Um, we do uh, tax strategy, tax fulfillment, um, and then uh, uh, bookkeeping. We do uh, corporate credit, uh, helping people establish. Right now we're averaging about $4 million a month and helping small businesses raise capital for their businesses and, and separating that liability there. Um, and then the last one is we do full comprehensive estate plans, wills, trust, power of attorney, and healthcare directives. And we do all of that underneath one roof. So we don't outsource any of that. It's our attorneys, our CPAs, our tax preparers, our corp credit coaches, our, all of that. Yes, sir. Amazing. So you guys can help set it up. You can help uh, coach and strategize and consult on the best ways to do certain types of things with the bookkeeping, the tax filing. That's awesome. One-stop shop. I love that. That's yes, so sir. awesome, man. I mean, over the years, I've been an entrepreneur for 18 years now, I guess, give or take 18 or nine, 19. And uh, man, I've been through several different accounting firms and you know, sitting down with a lawyer, sometimes these guys bill you three, 400 bucks to uh, just to have a call. Yeah. You know, it's just retarded. So having it, having a service like this is so great because you guys are super affordable. You help people out and you allow them to scale with you guys as well as use and pick and choose what they need help with. Yeah. No, you know, we, some businesses yeah. that are doing just, you know, 50 transactions a year, they don't need a bookkeeper for that. But when you're doing 50 transactions a week, it's like me. You can't keep track of that by yourself. Yeah. You're crazy. Good luck. Yeah. You know, so keeping up on that weekly can be so helpful. And then yeah. I didn't even know you guys did business credit uh, or funding, funding yep. Yep. in the EIN. That's amazing. Yep. That's amazing. How does that typically look and work? Yeah. So um, what they're, what you're doing is, is uh, we would assign you a corporate credit coach that works with you for 12 consecutive months walking you through that process of like, here's my EIN and walking you through establishing the paydex score, building you the paydex score. And then we work with over 1500 different financial institutions that based on the industry you're in, based on the money that you're looking for in your transaction history, these are the three, the top three that are going to be most beneficial to get you to that money that you're looking for as quickly as possible. Then we work with you for the 12 months. Um, and all you're paying for is the corporate credit coach. You're not paying for, we don't take six to 10%, like a lot of credit, uh, car, um, a lot of credit companies that are out there like, Hey, I helped you get a hundred thousand dollars. So now I'm going to take six or 10% of that. Um, that's there. And then the other piece of that is we don't, uh, do any credit card stacking or anything like that. Cause we're not trying to help you get into debt. We're trying to help you get out of debt. And so that's really what we're doing is helping establish it from that perspective. So. Man, I love that. I love that you guys said, I'm not trying to get you into debt. I'm trying to get you out of debt. Yeah. Yeah. No, we, I, we love it. When I first started in this business, I had 60 grand in credit card debt and I hired a coach and I spent three grand on a meal campaign. So I spent another eight. So I went from 60 to 68. And it, to me, it didn't seem like I really made much of a dent or like, you know, made the hole much bigger, much, much bigger. Cause it is already pretty large. 
Yep. And man, within four months, I didn't have any credit card debt. And I haven't had any since that was eight years ago. I'm I I'm not a big fan of the whole credit card stacking thing. So the fact yeah. that you guys aren't doing that is great. Build real credit, real lines of credit, not just that. Like, you know, that's amazing. Cool. Yeah. I yeah. love this. This is so awesome. Know, we got a hand. Uh, I know Eric had a quick question here. Yeah. Software, uh, accounting software, do we recommend? Um, so when somebody signs up with our bookkeeping uh, program, and I, I did uh, notice that you raised your hand for me, Nick. So, um, uh, um, and I do love that quote. Uh, my dad always told us that the more taxes you pay, uh, pay it means you're making more money. So don't worry about them. <laughs> I do like that. Um, so, um, so everybody, when they sign up for our bookkeeping product, along with that subscription comes along with a uh, QuickBooks. And so it just makes it easier, um, one, to keep track. Your CPA is logging in and doing that with you. So QuickBooks is a, is a really good one um, from, a, from a, an accounting software doing that. I would say they, I say they got 90 plus percent market share. Yeah. yeah every, every Fortune 500 company all the way down to the company that's got, that's yeah. five minutes old. I mean, most, they got to have 90% market share. Yeah. And, and because they've got such a big market share, uh, they're reasonably priced, but then they also have the ability to plug into a lot of other softwares that are out there to, that, that as you scale and grow and do different things, it just makes it easier from that perspective. And so we always uh, um, get somebody a, a QuickBooks account and then assign them a CPA that's doing that with them uh, from that perspective. If you're looking for a good tax tracking software, an app, there's one out there called Keeper Tax. Uh, K E E P E R tax, just like it sounds. Keeper tax. Um, there's an app um, that's a pretty good one. It's it's pretty cheap. I think it's like seven dollars a month or like a, uh, I can't remember. It's it's pretty cheap for an annual, and that one will actually connect to all of your credit cards and bank accounts, and then it'll keep track. Like every time it's a transaction, it'll text you, "Was this for your?" this business or was it this? And then it's got an AI component. So it pretty soon. Oh, that's cool. That's habits, cool. And it'll track it all basically of basically does the, um, the end of the month, you know, reconciliation done real time with a text yep. message. I mean, that's yep. just like amazing. You can yeah, basically you uh, do it yourself report. if you're not having that yep. many transactions going through. Yep. Yeah. My phone will be red hot though. Be like yeah. Lowe's, Home Depot, Lowe's, Menards, Home Depot. It's like boom, yeah. boom, boom. <laughs> but yeah. that's really cool. That's cool. Yeah. Yeah. So and then um then Nick, you had a you had a question for us, my friend. You you said you had a question. Yes, on that on that slide before you had that the different brackets and you that in the middle you had the holding company. Yes, sir. Now is that an LLC as well, or is that uh, something totally different that you put different LLCs into? Yeah, no, great question. So um, it is a uh, it is a um, uh, um, it is a LLC, um, and the reason why I'm stuttering there a little bit is because it'll be it'll start out as an LLC, and then as your business grows, um, we can file a form, and then it will change the uh, it'll change the um, uh, it to be taxed as an S corp that typically around the hundred thousand or more a year in income is when we'll start doing that. And the reason why we'll the do S that course is an election. It's a tax election. It's an election. Yep. Whereas exactly. the well, LLC is a business EIN essentially. Correct. Right? So the election is yep. more like more so like once you're in the tax code, trying to figure out which way you're going to pay it. And the LLC is the IRS's way of saying you owe money to us. Correct. Right. And yep. to track it, to track it with, through, the EIN, through the EIN. And the and the reason why we always put that around that hundred thousand threshold, Nick, is because once you do that hundred thousand threshold, that's when you're going to get the bigger um, benefit. Well, and then you can start paying payroll tax. So you can pay yourself out of your S corp and then deducting the payroll tax off of that. Um, and that just gives you more of a benefit to help you keep more of that there. But that's typically about a hundred thousand. But when we're creating that holding company in the safe haven state, it's always starts out as an LLC and then we'll build those subsidiaries underneath it. And so you personally, um, no one will ever visibly see that you own that holding company because of the safe haven laws. And then that holding company is what owns the subsidiaries 
And that's what protects you in those. Uh, so doing business in Florida or St. Louis or Utah or, or Wisconsin, like wherever you're at, um, because of the your holding company in that safe haven state protects it because it's owned by that subsidiary, not you. And that's how you keep that privacy and asset protection. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. Did, did yes, you hear your answer, Nick? Yes. Okay, cool. Awesome. Hey, Ryan, I just want to share my screen just for one second, man. This is amazing. So yeah. you guys gave me a website, which is awesome to direct people to that hooks them up on the pricing. And that's the most important thing is helping these individuals out, right? Down at the bottom, you guys are booking calls with people. This is so cool. Will you explain how this works? Yeah, absolutely. Are you, is, uh, for is it working? Is my screen sharing screen is, working? I don't think it's working. Yeah, all I'm seeing is dark. All I'm seeing oh, is dark. Bad. My bad. It's screwed up. Um, no, you're good. So they can book no, a you're call. Fine. So I you're dropped totally the fine. link in Zoom and I'm going to put it on school here as well. Um, and you added it in there as well too. This is so great. So yep. people can yep. book a free consultation. So, yeah. So, and, and again, this is something that um, David has already covered for you. He's already covered the expense. This is what he's worked out for you. Got is, you guys. Uh, he's covered and paid for a one hour consultation with a strategic business advisor. Somebody that's way smarter than me. We'll get and on the me. phone uh, and <laughs> walk through your personal situation. What are your short-term goals? What are your long-term goals? What are you trying to accomplish? Where are you at? Um, I'm operating underneath the DBA today, or I have two LLCs, or I have one LLC, um, but it's not underneath the holding company. What would you suggest? And they'll walk you through all of those things. And, and it might be just as simple as setting one up, right? right. Like. Like yep. you guys, this is a great thing. I want to, I want to emphasize this for a second. You guys are great at doing all of this stuff, but why do people typically not take the first step? It's because it's so much stuff. And the whole yep. point of real estate school is to keep this simple. Everything, setting up your business, talking to sellers, getting contracts, buying houses, we can flip them or whatever it may be, right? Yep. It doesn't have to be complicated. So we can start with one and yep. then we can strategize and we can build on it. It doesn't have to be going in and getting 62 of them. In right. fact, I don't have that many. I got eight, right? But, you know, just getting started is the best thing. So yep. book a call with Prime. And we're going to share a link here in Zoom. Of course, we're going to yep. add it to, to real estate school. And um, I've hooked you guys up, right? Yeah. As so Ryan he's covered, just said, he's paid worked out for, a deal with these guys. Uh, where they're going to do an hour consultation with you and they're going to help you out. And then you can pick what may work for you. Ryan, I didn't mean to cut you off. No, 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 you're good. No, you're good. I was just, I just wanted him to know how generous you was. So Got the one hour consultation, lifelong support. So as long as you're part of the school program and community, you get lifelong support from that strategic business advisor. So you can ask any questions, text, email. Once you've had that consultation, you're always linked to that person. And then the third thing is, is he's covered all of the attorney's fees for as many entities as you want to set up. So you're not paying an attorney, but they'll create the operating agreement, articles of uh, incorporation, the EIN number, They'll produce all of that and create all of that. And all you're paying for is the state filing fee and the hard doc fee. So um, that's going to be on the low end, $300, on the high end, $600, depending on the state. Um, and th that's out of our control. That's nothing. Like, what the state charges. $300 charges. to save a million dollars in taxes. You know, that's nothing. That's amazing. Ryan, this has been the best. Uh, we've obviously been, been, uh, been doing Q&A. If anybody has anything else, um, Ryan's here to help. You guys have helped me with several of my entities and helping out with lots of things. So that's why I have you guys here. I wouldn't endorse you if I wasn't, you know, uh, um, a friend and a trusted user and somebody that would de definitely, you know, say they, they're legit. They, these guys are great and super professional and you guys go above and beyond. It's, well, thank it's you. awesome. I love thank it. Thank you. Man. Appreciate so it. Awesome. Love so, you, brother. Thank you. Appreciate you. And uh, you again, uh, Tammy, Michael, Nick, uh, Eric had to pop off, but just, uh, Congratulations. You definitely uh, pick somebody that's going to work extremely hard and committed to your guys' success. So congratulations. I love it. I love it. Ryan, thank you for being Thanks here. To today. I want to respect your time. David, you got a question we could go. What's, what, what's up? No, I was just saying thank you to both of you. Oh, you're welcome. You're welcome. Michael, what you got, man? Yeah, this was a uh, very uh, helpful. It's something that's been on my mind and I'm really glad that you uh, got somebody in to talk to us about it. I feel a lot better now about where i want to go yeah it doesn't forward. have to be super complicated you know <laughs> yeah prime can help you guys set it up and it doesn't have to be crazy but if you want to make it crazy like here's the thing the tax code's crazy 
So like if I, you know, I got 60 properties, of course, I'm not going to just have one. I'm going to have seven different structures, right? But if you are new and you're just starting in this game, you need one. You do not need complicated. So hopefully the goal here was to keep it simple and just to let you guys know that Ryan and Prime can help you guys get it going to where that's no longer an issue. You want to flip houses, you need to have this done and behind you. And that's your business bank account. Essentially, you're getting a business bank account. That's the only difference. There's paperwork involved in the front end and there's filing with the, with the state and you know and that's where they come in. But after that, you have a business bank account. You are in business, my friend. Let's get you in business so you can start flipping houses. Michael, thank you for the kind words. Nick, yeah. we good? You got questions? No, I just appreciate it all. I'm really getting a lot of inf good quality information out of everything you've been putting out for us. And hey, Brian, real estate school fun, isn't too. it? Oh, yes. We're having fun right. and we're growing. I love it. All right, guys. Thanks for being here today. Ryan, I want to respect your time. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, use the link in the video. I'm going to drop it down in the replay here in school. And um, on that page, on that link, there's going to be information about all the amazing things that Prime can do to help you get your business going. Guys, this needs to be easy. This doesn't need to be complicated. It doesn't need to be costly. We can do both. We can make it simple. We can make it cost effective. We can get rid of the worries about you know, having something to build and then start operating. Once you have yourself a business bank account, let's fill it up with money. That's the goal. It's simple. We're going to go buy some houses and flip them. We've done this 850 times. You can do it 10 times. You can do it 20 times. We're going to teach you guys. So simple. All right. With that being said, have a great rest of your day. Thanks for being here. Thank Brian. you. Thank you. Matt, Talk to you guys no soon. Matt, God bless. Bye-bye. See you guys. How so easy. We close fast and any time that works for you. Your house don't need it. We'll throw cash. It hits so fast. Don't know what to do. Wanted to care to keep it. No declutter.